Hey everyone and welcome to my GTA Online and GTA 5 graphics comparison breakdown between the Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and PC versions of the game. Today we will be taking a look in depth at just how much of a visual upgrade the jump to new gen is, with multiple shots comparing just about every visual aspect I could think of on each version of the game, and each visual mode on the next gen version. I've been working on this video for over a week now and I'm very happy to bring you guys my findings, so let's take a look at Los Santos for the fourth time now. As a quick disclaimer, all of my tests were ran at the same time of day with the same weather with the PC version at the highest possible settings. But before we get into any comparisons between the different versions of the game, I first want to answer the question, what exactly are the differences between the different modes performance, performance RT, and fidelity? Well, in terms of just raw resolution the game runs at, performance and performance RT, they run at 1440p, but I'm pretty sure that's upscaled to 4K. And the fidelity mode runs at native 4K resolution, which is noticeably sharper, but also noticeably clunkier as the game runs at 30 FPS instead of 60 like on the performance modes. Exclusive to the fidelity and performance RT modes are also ray trace sun shadows, which give off a more realistic effect to the outside environment. But those are just the obvious differences. There's also another difference I noticed between the modes that comes in the form of reflections. Here I've put the Performance RT and Performance Mode side by side in a reflection test, and the Performance RT version seems to have lower quality reflections than the regular Performance Mode. Then when we add in the Fidelity Mode you can really see the difference in quality, with Fidelity producing the highest quality reflections that even end up matching the highest possible setting on PC. On the opposite end of the spectrum though, the Performance RT reflections seem to match the quality of the reflections seen on the last generation systems, the Xbox One and PS4, albeit looking slightly better since it is running at a higher resolution. Even more interesting though is when we take a look at reflections in rain puddles, because it's at this moment where we see fidelity mode in its full glory, beating even the PC version at its max setting here. Although the actual clarity of the reflection is the same through Fidelity and PC, more light sources are reflected on the new consoles in Fidelity mode, which means that, at least for this setting, Rockstar actually enhanced the graphics instead of just copying the PC settings over to console. However, aside from reflections, resolution, the frame rate, and ray trace shadow differences, I could not find any other substantial differences between the modes worth showcasing, and I tested everything from draw distance differences, visual effects, texture quality, the foliage, I could not see any differences at all. So when deciding on which mode to play, you just have to ask yourself, do you want higher quality reflections with performance mode or ray trace shadows and lower quality reflections? Fidelity mode, of course, you can get all those, but you also get 30 FPS, which I cannot recommend playing at, at least for online. Maybe save that one for story mode for a better looking experience, but for online, I would recommend one of the performance modes. Going back to the shadows, I want to do some comparisons to both old gen and PC, because when we first looked at the shadows, it was just comparing the different modes. Here in the parking lot, we're comparing non-ray trace shadows using the regular performance mode and the last gen console version. And at least in this shot, the shadow almost looks better on the last gen console. You can still see the shadows of the individual bars on the ground, and the shadow of the player model is much more defined than on the performance mode. It looks much closer to the PC version's max setting. With a lot of the shots that I showcased today, you'll be able to notice differences in the background between the different versions as well. For instance, in this parking lot shot, take a look at the details and objects in the distance. On last gen, the poles on the beach are extremely low quality due to the lower resolution and weaker anti-aliasing, but on next gen systems with stronger anti-aliasing at higher resolution, that is no longer an issue. They look much cleaner in the distance. However, on the PC version in this shot, notice the extra fencing on the beach. This is missing on the next-gen versions, matching that of the last-gen render distance. Mm -hmm. 
There are a couple of issues that I've noticed with shadows on the Xbox Series X though. Specifically with ray trace shadows, this can create some very blocky looking shadows on vehicles while driving in and out of a shadowed area. On the new weaponized Ignis here, watch as I drive under this highway here. As I pass by the slot where sunlight peeks through, it looks as if a Lego shadow gets placed on my car for a second. I'm not really sure what causes this to happen or if there's anything that they can do to prevent that from happening. All I know is that it only happens with ray trace shadows and it's something that is actually quite noticeable when playing. I noticed it right away. The other issue, and I believe this is on Series X consoles specifically, or Series consoles specifically, so probably the Series S in there as well. I don't think this problem occurs on PS5, but Rockstar seems to have forgotten to put a projected shadow underneath vehicles. I'm sure you guys have noticed that your car looks kind of off, that something just doesn't seem quite right when you drive through areas where there isn't a sun shadow under the vehicle. That's because there's usually supposed to be a shadow underneath the vehicle at all times to prevent that floating look. It's there on Xbox One, it's there on PC, but it's missing on Series X for some reason. So hopefully they add this back in a future patch because it does look pretty bad. It looks like you're playing GTA San Andreas with the graphics mod. Textures across the board are upgraded, of course, the higher resolution helps with this, but you can definitely tell a difference in quality of the road texture here between last gen and next gen, with next gen being nearly identical to the PC texture detail. If we turn our attention to the railing here on last gen, you can see there's a large amount of jaggies going on that's causing it to look like a round object rather than a line of bars. With next gen's improved anti-aliasing, it clears that right up. Now let's look at the draw distance, render distance, level of detail, all that stuff. Has it improved with the new versions of the game? Unfortunately, not really. Don't get me wrong, things in the distance do look better because of the better anti-aliasing and the increased pixel count. That on its own is going to help with visibility, but... And I can't believe I'm saying this, there are aspects of the render distance that are worse on next gen when compared to last gen even. So we have this shot here taken from the top of Maze Bank looking over the city on fidelity mode of all things. Just to remind you, the draw distance doesn't change with the modes, but just to prove a point, I'm using fidelity mode here. For starters, look at this particular spot on the highway. You can just barely see cars and they almost look transparent enough to where you can't really see them that well. Switching over to last gen for a second, for whatever reason those cars become much more visible from farther away. And on PC, it's the same way, the cars are still much more visible than they are in next gen. It's even more apparent on the other side where this road is down the street from the beach. On last gen, you can see the cars moving. On PC, you can see the cars. On next gen, you can hardly even tell there are vehicles over there. So in that aspect, it's actually worse than the last gen consoles. The level of detail in general at distance also hasn't been increased at all. The construction site has the exact same props missing right here that last gen does. On PC, it's better though. PC has the increased draw distance, of course. The boat dock shows the same level of detail across both next gen and last gen. Again, it looks much better on PC. The beach, you can see the big statue on the PC version. On either console version, you, however, can't. The Vespucci police station has trees in front of it, and you can even see an entire wall on the PC version that isn't there on the consoles. So as you can tell, last gen and next gen, they have the same exact level of detail. It just looks a bit better on next gen because it's rendered as a higher resolution, obviously. But you're still looking at giant blurry objects in the distance on next gen, and that's the case for all three modes. At nighttime, it looks like the lights are also handled differently, which makes the city a lot darker as a whole. That light flickering effect that you see on last gen of PC is gone, which does kind of give it a more realistic feeling. And you also can't see the headlights and taillights of cars moving at a distance at nighttime, which makes the city look a little less alive. Another aspect of draw distance is what's known as anisotropic filtering. Without getting too technical here, this basically determines the distance at which a texture like a road for instance stays high quality. The higher the setting, the farther away it's going to hold that detail. Unfortunately, this is another aspect that didn't see an upgrade with next gen. 
Look at this yellow double line road here for comparison. As you go down the line, it starts to blur and look less like two lines. On next gen and last gen, this happens at around the same distance, but on PC, you can't really see that line blur as it follows down the road. It looks very sharp all the way through. Or at least, in your direct view, it stays sharp. It's arguably more noticeable when you're driving, especially at very fast speeds, although on next gen, you won't really notice it as much because everything in front of you is blurry because the game has motion blurred by default for whatever reason, and you can't turn it off which limits visibility by more than you'd think. Here I've stopped gameplay in the middle of speeding down a road in the Zentorno. The Series X image, obviously, you can see a lot of blur on the sides and on the road in front of you, while the PC version, on the other hand, is still very sharp while in motion. We really need an option to turn the setting off. I would much prefer everything in front of me to be clear as day without some artificial blur adding to it. The final render distance test is one I performed in GTA Online, and it's probably the most important one if you do any sort of PvP in this game. What is the distance at which you can see another player increase at all from last gen? In the Xbox One, I measured the render distance to be around 760 to 770 meters. It's at that distance where the person you were trying to see will just fade out of existence. On PC, the distance that you can see another player is astronomically better at over 1000 meters. I was able to see him across the entire airport, basically. How does this compare to next gen? It's very unfortunate, but you probably could have guessed it based on the other render distance tests I've shown so far, but the render distance matches the Xbox One player render distance at the same 770 or so meters. And the same issue still exists where one player will occasionally be able to see the other player when the other one can't see them. And it creates this kind of pop-in effect that happens when the render distance is even at shorter ranges than I measured the actual render distance for players to be. So render distance, still a massive issue on consoles, it's still gonna hinder you. What's even more shocking is the helicopter test. Look how far away I'm able to see the other player on PC from the pilot seat of a helicopter. I can see him from all the way behind the building outside of the airport, when he's on foot in the airport. Now look at how far you can see someone from a helicopter on next-gen GTA Online on the Xbox Series X. Yeah, it's really bad. In case you're wondering, yes, this matches the Xbox One and PS4 distance, so on PC you can see people from a helicopter at like twice the distance you can from a helicopter, even on the expanded and enhanced version. Which is not good at all, that is a very poor draw distance for other players. I would have figured that a 7 year old game running on a 2020 console could have maybe afforded better draw distance, but I guess that's not the case and we have to still have the same draw distance from a console released in 2013. Anyways, let's go touch some grass. The foliage seems to be an area where it is upgraded for next gen systems though, it seems to be on par with the PC Ultra Grass, or maybe one notch down from that, but it's definitely more than the Xbox One, which if you guys remember actually had the worst grass setting compared to the PS4 back in the day, the PS4 had much better foliage. But it seems that's no longer the case, it's been upgraded on the Series X. The expanded and enhanced versions of GTA 5 got a handful of new effects, which we will go over and compare now. Firstly, explosions and fire had their effects changed. Tire smoke has been given a more detailed effect along with a brighter color as well. Shattered glass from car windows now have an increased number of particles that land on the ground to make it more realistic. And gunfire has been given some new smoke and muzzle flash effects.
This doesn't just apply to your standard ground weapons either. The Buzzard miniguns, for example, give off a much brighter muzzle flash effect. Although, the new effect does look a bit off if you look at it head on because it appears to be like 2D. So looking at it directly makes it turn all these weird directions and just looks flat. It looks really weird. Anyway, that is going to wrap up the in-depth graphics comparison between GTA 5 on last gen, next gen, and the PC. I really wish they would have done more to increase the render distance, especially for other players in online, maybe giving us a third performance option that favored in-game settings over resolution. It's still a good upgrade visually over the last gen versions though, just for the increased anti-aliasing. That makes a big difference in the smoothness of the image during gameplay. We still do have one more test though, and that is the frame rate between the three performance modes. And I probably have that out in about a week from now. But if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more content. I apologize this video was delayed a couple times. I just wanted to make sure that I included everything that I wanted to and didn't want to rush it out. I want to thank my friends for helping me record this video, The Brick Prince, Mastermind, and Northern Law, as well as all my channel members for your support. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always... Thanks for watching, and have a great day.